Hello, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire. You know, it's week after week. You just get disappointed, disappointed, disappointed. It's not so much that the people are enemies, the evil is gaining ground. They're doing what, of course, they're going to do because evil promotes evil and they're going to expand evil as much as they possibly can and they work very hard to do it. My disappointment comes in the people who are supposed to be standing up for the truth standing up for the church, standing up for God's rights. This video is entitled God's Rights, Not State's Rights, because this last week at the vice presidential candidate debate, after the debate took place, and Vance did a pretty good job, I thought, as far as debates go, people were saying, oh, this is so wonderful. Trump and Vance are, are so great. You know, some of the people were even say they're 100% pro-life. And I'm sitting here thinking like, Okay, well, reality check, they clearly are not 100% pro-life. Uh, they're for IVF, they're for contraception, they're for the Moloch ritual, at least to some degree. Trump's wife just came out and basically confessed she's totally uh, pro-choice. I think I can say that without getting banned on YouTube. So here we are, we faced with this situation. We have a bunch of people running around wanting to defend Trump in Vance ticket. Now, I totally get it, because the alternative is much, much, yeah, it is much, much worse. It is. I'm not denying that. And if your conscience tells you that you need to vote for Trump in Vance, for, in Vance against Harris, I'm not going to blame you. I think that that's probably a, a valid moral decision. I think it's also a valid moral decision that you refrain from voting at all or voting for a third party. But here's the situation that I want to talk about. What's so frustrating is I'm hearing from folks and I'm reading more than one source, so I'm not going to name anybody specifically, that what Trump did for the pro-life movement was so great because he got rid of Roe versus Wade. And that's all he needed to do. That's the end of the story. And now it's just our job to go around and convince people why all 50 states should pass legislation to outlaw the Moloch ritual. That's that's what we're being told. Because, you know, states' rights, because of subsidiarity. Oh, that's a Catholic principle indeed. But people are confusing subsidiarity with states' rights. They're not the same. Now, that's going to require another whole video or at least a full-fledged article. I'm going to work on that to explain to you why the principle of Catholic subsidiarity is not connected to this idea of American federalism and states' rights. You see, it's not a good thing that the Moloch ritual is legal in California, New York, Illinois, Colorado, etc., etc., etc. That's that's a bad thing. Now, it's I'm not saying Roe versus Wade overturning it was bad. Of course it was good because now at least some of the states who have at least some sense of decency and humanity left are doing something about it. And Good for them. That's great. Roe versus Wade was horrible law. A lot of people agree with that. Great. We got rid of that monstrosity. But that never should have been the goal. The goal, the goal must be to eliminate, eliminate this practice. This practice that I have to be careful in how I describe it on the this platform. Across the nation. Blanket. Eliminate. Well, it's impossible. That's just impossible. Oh, you think you think getting 50 states to pass 50 different pieces of legislation or in citizen initiatives is going to be easier? What are you talking about? That's impossible. That's impossible. That's impossible. The whole point is, is our attitude is all wrong about this. We're always happy about going half ass, getting just a little bit here, a little bit there. In my state, they try to introduce a personhood amendment, which basically would have defined human beings as persons at the time they were conceived. And the Catholic bishops in this state were opposed to it. Well, that's not good strategy. Oh, really? What's the other strategy? What's the other strategy, bishops? You see, we have no strategy. We don't set goals properly. We had absolutely no plan whatsoever once Roe was overturned, because everybody probably thought that was impossible. 
you know, we just keep the just keep the wheels turning, the money flowing. Nothing ever changes. Everything always moves towards more evil. Everything moves towards more evil. Where's the church at? Completely missing. The church is completely missing. We have a man who's not even Catholic claiming to be the Pope. You know, the media people who are supposed to be exposing the crisis in the church say now they're not going to talk about the crisis in the church. They're just too good a people to do it, I guess, too virtuous to talk about the crisis at Crisis Magazine. What are we supposed to do with, with, with this lack of leadership like this? It's just awful. It's so pathetic. The Lord must be so disappointed with us, so disappointed us, that we're more worried about maintaining states' rights. Hey, it's at the states now. Yeah. yeah. Do you think God cares about the Tenth Amendment? You think that God cares about the Tenth Amendment? I promise you God doesn't care about the Tenth Amendment. What he does care about are those souls that are being lost, tortured, and murdered. So we need to start thinking right about this, my friends. We need to start thinking right. And most importantly, we need to get some courage to talk openly, to talk frankly, and to call out stupidity when you hear it, even when it's in weakness, when you hear it, even when it's on your own side. This was the problem with the Republican Party for 60 years. There's some of the most gutless, immoral, horrific people that run that party at the very top. I know because I was part of it. To some degree, and I knew the people, and that's why I had to get out because I thought I was doing something to benefit my country and my nation by helping that wretched party. No, 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 not at all. And sadly, we have to start calling out the church. Now, the church doesn't belong to us, it belongs to Christ. That's why we need to defend the church, not defend these wretched, wretched creatures that are trying to destroy it and that are sending millions and millions of souls to hell every year. Oh, you can't talk about that, Pope Francis. Stop it. This cowardice has got to stop, my friends. It's got to stop. That's all I'm asking. Let's just speak truth. Just speak truth. Call out the insanity and the stupidity when we see it. You're going to have a lot of opportunities uh, with the synod of synodality. And we have a lot of opportunities in our politics as well. You know, we all have to make tough choices in life. I get it. But we should never cover up and lie for evil. Thanks for listening, my friends. I'm sorry this was a bit of a rant. I know you normally would expect more analysis. Uh, and you didn't get that today. You just you just got a rant. But you know, sometimes you have it's important to have passion about things and actually care about what's happening around you. And to stop saying, I'm so virtuous that I'm going to sit back and let other people take care of the problem 50, 100 years from now. And in the meantime, let souls go to hell and let millions and millions of babies die. Thank you for listening. If this is useful, please share the video. Please like the ch channel, like the video, uh, subscribe. That helps. And, and feel free to comment. Comment. I'm happy to entertain your comments. I read them. I can't respond to everybody, but I... Uh, do try. And I thank you for listening. God bless. Viva Cristo Rey. And pray for this nation.